This is David Howard for Vader TV. I'm back with Dana Schultz. He's an attorney who works primarily with small startup technology companies. The last time we spoke with Dana, we talked uh, a lot about broad issues about intellectual property and working with contractors and employees. Uh, Dana, this time, this time, let's dive in a little bit deeper. Um, I'm working from your your list of top ten mistakes that small startups uh, often make, and one of the things you mention here is open source. Is that open source doesn't always mean what you think it means? True enough. Of course, open source has become tremendously popular, and there are a lot of companies that are making a pretty good living nowadays with open source software, uh, providing the software and or related support services. But I think the single most important thing to realize is that open source doesn't mean no rules whatsoever. There are many of diff different open source licenses out there in the marketplace. If you are creating open source software, you have to decide what license you're going to use. Maybe it's the GPL, maybe it's the Apache license, could be one of many others. Uh, or if you're using some existing open source software, then you need to know which license applies to that software. And it is very important that you comply with those license terms. So if those license terms say that you either must provide or must make available source code, then make sure you're doing that. And if the source code isn't included, make sure that you provide the appropriate uh, URL so people know where to get it. The other thing that companies need to be really careful about with respect to open source is if they believe they are creating proprietary software, but inadvertently incorporate some open source software, depending on those open source license terms, they may have actually turned that proprietary product into an open source product. And when that happens, that generally is not a very pleasant surprise for a company to come across. Yeah, understandably. Now, <clears throat> just changing gears a little bit, we also talked last time about contractors. And uh, China's come on very strong. Uh, as we talk now, the Olympic opening games are starting. Mm -hmm. What folks be careful about when they outsource to China or India or Taiwan or Belarus? Well, you're right, Dave. Uh, outsourcing is becoming more popular, and for the obvious economic reasons, a lot of outsourcing is going offshore, sometimes being referred to as offshoring. And the legal systems in other countries aren't necessarily as robust as ours and aren't necessarily going to get as high level of protection. So you mentioned China, one of the big names. Uh, the, the Chinese, as they are developing economically, are really making pretty substantial efforts to come up with a system which is closer in nature to what the developed world knows nowadays. But nevertheless, uh, outright thievery of intellectual property is rampant in China nowadays. Uh, India, it's a different story. India has a legal system derived from the British system, which is very much what we would consider to be in the mainstream. But the problem with India is that their legal system is so choked up that it might take you seven years before litigation comes to a conclusion. And of course, in today's technology environment, several seven years is several generations. So in effect, you have no recourse. When my clients are looking at offshoring, the principal recommendation I make to them, aside from, of course, looking very carefully at the contract terms of, of your offshore service provider, is don't give away the family jewels. Don't give away something that will be a crushing blow to your company if it is stolen. Offshore the more routine stuff. Keep the family jewels claimed. Use an outsourcer here in the United States where you can count on them to perform in accordance with the agreement. And if for any reason the agreement is breached, have a reasonably secure legal remedy available to you in third order. Well, it sounds like really good advice again, Dana. I appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.